Well, to those of you who've been following along on this channel, you know that I do custom repairs, restorations, new, uh, I'll do new builds on wagons. And my parameter is that you have to be able to hook a draft animal to it. Draft horse, saddle horse, mule, dogs, uh, goats. I even did one that was being pulled by turkeys. Um, but generally it has to be a traditional style vehicle before I'm really interested in getting too deep into it. Well, I have a wagon that we're going to uh, go through today. And on the surface, it looks like a traditional wagon. But once we begin to look a little closer, we'll see that it's not quite so. The main problem is with the wheels and these nuts were loosening up. So as I got to looking at a little closer to this wagon, I began to see telltale signs of what this wagon was about. Not quite traditional. There's quite a little bit of homemade fabrication and if you've watched my videos, you'll begin to see some of these little oddities stand out. This would be called, I would say it's an original, but it's not traditional. And there's a big difference between the two. I would consider this wagon original to the man who built it, but not so much in a traditional method. So I'm going to grab a creeper and crawl under this thing and we're going to see that there's really quite a few things that aren't quite traditional. It has a fifth wheel support similar to a buggy. The back axle has been replaced and the skeins don't really quite fit so they welded a strap across from skein to skein from right to left. Yeah, it kind of makes me wonder who put this wagon together. You can see it's not forged like the old traditional ones would be. So I'm going to take some wagon jacks and jack this up and see what's happening inside these wheels. Part of the problem from the customer was saying that the right rear wheel was the worst, having the nut loosen up when his horses were jigging and dancing. So they hadn't really quite learned how to stand still yet. So I'm going to open these up and kind of see what we got going on. Well, even though a square axle nut is the most common, there are a few of these hex nuts around. But when I open them up and I start to see these little metal shims that have been added, my suspicion radar goes up. When I find big old washers like this, I know something's not right. So I'm going to check the fit. And it doesn't take much to find out these wheels don't fit the skein. Well, the outside of the boxing isn't bad, but the overall boxing is about 3 eighths of an inch too short. And the taper on the inside is not even close. It's about 3 sixteenths of an inch too big on the boxing to the skein. Though we got enough grease on here we can't even see what's going on. I'm going to clean things up. So after a run through the sandblaster we can see seamless arm. A number three and an L for left. Inside is pretty traditional but there sure is a big wear groove. The three should stand for a three inch axle. And this is what is on the large side of the skein. There's the three. So the nut does fit the skein. Well, I got about three and a quarter inch, and I'm going to get rid of these steel washers and put in a leather washer. The problem with steel washers is that they'll grab and seize, whereas a leather washer won't. 
Well, I got a pretty heavy side of leather here, and I've got some homemade punches, and I'm going to punch out some washers that's going to fit these wheels and axles. Well, I thought I had this center hole kind of figured out, but a quick little check, I'm a little tight. And I really don't have the right size, so I'm going to make me a new little punch that should fit these axles a little better. Well, there's not really much I can do about the misfit on the taper, but with a little other shim, we can take the play out of this hub in and out where it runs up against the nut, and that'll help it a little bit. Well, this nut is the same hexagon but it doesn't have the seamless arm on there like the other one does. And this has a little different configuration of washers. Well, this washer isn't really quite thick enough like I'd like. In my configuration of washers, I've got one that's a little heavier. This one's going to fit a little better. Looks like what they've been using is just an ordinary general purpose grease, which I got some about like it. So we'll grease it up and stick it back together.
Well, this right rear wheel is the wheel that was giving him the most fits. So we'll see what we've got going. Got the same little round washer. Oh my, we got lots of washers in here. When I cleaned the grease off of this one, my first thought was, huh, wow, somebody needs to learn how to weld. Well, now what do we do? We're going to clean it up. Yep, still a seamless three. This one has an R on it for the right side instead of a left. And boy, we got a lot of shims in this one. With all these welds, it's keeping the nut from going on, but just about maybe three threads. Then it bottoms out on this weld. Well, that's why we got to add so many shims. We can't even get the nut on. See how far out it's sticking? Well, the inside of these nuts have kind of a concave little section to them. I think if I knock some of this weld down, it'll fit into this little concave section of this nut. That's going to gain us a couple threads. And I think maybe if I take a triangle file, I might could clean it up to get it in about to where it almost have a full set of threads. I thought about cutting these apart, but then we got these straps on there. They go front and back both. They're welded to the skeins and they go from one side to the next. And You know, this really isn't a high dollar wagon, so now there comes to be the puzzle of how much time and effort do I put in here to fix this? Or do I just make it where the nut will stay off? Well, the latter decision was where I decided to go. I'm going to try to clean some of this weld up See if I can't get close to a full nut's worth of thread on these nuts. Well, without really an in-depth surgical operation, there's just really no way to make this ideal. I got her down to where I'm about one thread or thread and a half short of getting the whole nut on. Still takes two washers to take all the play in and out. But with the leather washers, as opposed to all those steel washers, it won't have a tendency to loosen that nut up quite so bad when you're backing up. Well, the right front has kind of the same problem, but it's not near as severe. So this one's not quite so difficult to get a full nut's worth of thread on it. But my oh my, did they have lots of washers on this one. Still the seamless 3R, but look at this stack of washers. Wow.
So these are all the washers I took out. This is the left rear. This one was the left front. And this one here was the right rear. All these washers and the other one here is the right front. So overall, these are not ideal fixes, but they'll make the wagon run. The biggest part was getting rid of the steel washers so they don't lock up or seize up against the nuts quite so much. Putting these leather washers in will make a big difference. So when doing repairs like this, there's a number of factors that all add in. One is the goal and desire of the customer. One is the overall integrity of the wagon, and therefore the value of the wagon, and just how much time, effort, and expense is worth investing into the wagon to make it runnable. If it weren't safe, I wouldn't do it. But sometimes it's less than ideal, but that's just the reality of life. Well, now we have a tongue that we need to change out. It's about six inches shorter than he would like, it's kind of a homemade fabrication too, but it is what it is. We'll swap it over and make it work. Well, over the years I've been asked over and over and time and time again, where did you learn to do what you do? Did your dad do it? Well, my common answer is no, my dad didn't do it. I just kind of picked it up by doing it. And I've said time and time again, my teachers have been the wagons themselves. Kind of like looking for counterfeit money. When you look at the original long enough, you see what's counterfeit. And I think you've been viewing long enough, you can kind of see what's counterfeit. So I'll finish this next week. Thanks for watching.